What is going on YouTube? Hit back making another brand new Crypto TV episode. In today's video, we'll be looking at Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as EOS to BTC. Next week, we'll be doing a different altcoin, so definitely let me know down in the comments which coin you want to see for next week's video. Otherwise, we will be discussing the coin market cap, as well as Coinbase and Visa making Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, XRP. And, and like I said, Litecoin payments, a reality, partnering with Visa, it's going to be very interesting. I have a quick summary of that to kind of discuss with you guys, as well as discussing the very big news, which a lot of you guys already know, market dipped, which I've been saying the past probably week or so, and a lot of you guys have been saying it won't but it did and we will be discussing that in depth otherwise let's jump into today's episode so guys i'm on the current coin market cap and we are definitely gaining some traction here on the channel we are i think 83 30 8330 subs last time i checked we're headed to 8500 and eventually 9000 and then 10000 when we hit 10000 subscribers i will be doing a free cryptocurrency giveaway uh for a, probably a hundred dollars free cryptocurrency of your choice so that'll be pretty awesome uh all you have to do to you know enter that is definitely make sure you're subscribed you have post notifications turned on as well as drop a like on the channel otherwise uh moving on to the coin market cap as you guys can see market is looking very interesting uh bitcoin dominance has definitely grown so we were at around 51 percent yesterday we're now at 52 percent so bitcoin is definitely not getting as you know it's not getting hit as hard as altcoins are we see 24 hour volume at 62.3 so much higher than we were yesterday indicating money is either moving in or out of exchanges we find out which way as soon as we look at the market cap which is 170.9 indicating money is leaving exchanges as we scroll down you can see that out of the top 10 cryptos only one seems to be in green tether which makes sense it's a stable coin it trades sideways pretty much around a dollar the entire time but you can see the rest of the market is actually getting hit very 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 hard you can see bitcoin is down four percent but the rest of the market is down almost double digits you can see xrp is down seven ethereum down an eight eos down 10 litecoin down 11 wow that's actually very surprising we had bitcoin cash then litecoin then eos then we had litecoin then bitcoin cash then eos eos just came out of the blue and swooped up past bitcoin cash litecoin and then jumped and took the number four spot so number four seems to be a very difficult spot to breach uh as long as because they're all seeming seeming to be neck and neck you know bitcoin cash litecoin and eos are neck and neck in terms of uh which one is going to hold that number four position it's literally only beaten litecoin by like five maybe three and a half million dollars which is so small you know if we see any sort of correction from either currency it'll pretty much prove which one's going to hold that number four spot but for the most part market is down double digits it looks bad but i've been saying it's coming and it, it's here um so for those of you who agreed with me congratulations we did just fall uh which was anticipated at least from my standpoint and i will go in depth in a second as to why i believe it did and where i plan on buying or at least what my thoughts are as to what i plan on doing you know in the market right now so coinbase and visa are making bitcoin ethereum ripple xrp and litecoin payments a reality so bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies including ethereum ripple xrp and litecoin have struggled against uh accusations they they are harder to spend and use in the real world than you know their traditional fiat counterparts the bitcoin price which leaped higher last week to trade around five thousand dollars per coin has been called too unstable and volatile to be used as a means of payment resulting in bitcoin and other cryptos being used more to store value like gold and traditional means of exchange currencies now major bitcoin and cryptos exchange coinbase as we all know or should know has teamed up with global payment processor Visa to try to change that. Launching the Coinbase card, which allows users to spend crypto as effortlessly as money in their bank. So previously we've discussed Shift, the Shift card, which uh, was a partner of Coinbase that was on the channel uh, not too long ago, I mean, it was a couple months ago. But now Coinbase is just saying, screw that, we're just gonna make our own with Visa and we're just gonna do it all by ourselves. It's going to be very interesting because when we start to use Coinbase and Visa, you know, Coinbase takes fees for deposits and then Visa takes fees for deposits. So where does that leave us? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really make sense at all. Yes, it does make it more effortless, you know, but I feel like cash at that point is just cheaper to spend. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about that in the comments down below. But it says the Visa debit card, which has a $6.50 card in issuance fee. So now the card costs you 
$6.50, which is pretty cheap. Can be used to spend Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, XRP, Litecoin balances in millions of locations around the world by converting crypto to fiat when the card is used. The merchants or store gets paid in traditional fiat currency. So it's very interesting, actually. So this kind of ties into, uh, similar to Alliant. Alliant works with the merchants, so it's as simple as the customer gives you the Litecoin and or crypto and then your end, you know, as a merchant will convert that, you know, whatever Alliant has, you know, that you use your supporting contract, they turn that into fiat and then the merchant will receive the fiat. But this is different. This is the customer turns it, you know, into fiat and then gives it to you on their end. So their car changes it. And then that's, it's pretty interesting. It's definitely nice to see that as an option in the market. But in terms of like real world use, I feel like it'd be better to just for me to send you Litecoin if we both have, you know, an app on the exchange and then if you wanted to turn it into cash, it would be as simple as, you know, sending it to your bank and waiting a day versus doing it this way, which takes a while. And then, you know, as a merchant, it's still a credit card and it still, you know, charges you a fee of three something percent, 2.8% as I've learned in my classes. So it doesn't really make sense, but I'd really like to hear you guys' feedback on that. What do you guys think? Otherwise, jumping into the market, I know this is the most important anticipated part of today, but as you guys can see, that is exactly what has been happening. So we dipped, you know, um, I've been saying it for the past couple of days and that is exactly what we did, we dipped. Now, obviously the best point in buying in would be as close to 73, uh, as possible. So I told you guys in previous videos that I bought in at around $80 back when we tested here or sorry Yeah, I believe it was here. Yeah from this candle right here when we tested closer to 80 It said 80 to 83 was a good buying opportunity But now we're pulling lower. So I said when I bought in at around 80 to 83 That was when I started dollar cost averaging at around 10% of my entire investment that I wanted to put in. And I said, as we scale down, I will start putting in more. So down here, closer to 74, 73 would be more of a 30% investment that I would do. And then as we head down lower, so closer to 66 to 67 would be the m m most of my lump sum of what I m was planning on investing into here because we are setting, settling back down, you know, at 59, that is much better than where we were, which was, you know, up at 90 on the RSI, which is absolutely crazy talk, you know, to put in money there. I said that's a terrible idea. That is my opinion. That's what I'm doing. You know, this this channel is merely just me telling you guys what I am doing with my money. You guys can figure out what you want to do with that. You know, I'm, I'm just a YouTuber. So I do want that transparency on this channel. You know, take my advice, take others' advices on YouTube or whatever, and, and, and then make your own decision, you know? But we did pull back down, and I do think we're gonna go a little bit lower. Uh, we I gotta check the four hour to make that decision. So four hour is probably gonna be over. So now nah, yeah. So you can see what happened is we just topped the oversold market. So I actually think this is a very good time to be buying for me, and I actually will be putting in probably about thirty percent into Litecoin right at right about now because at seventy seven percent right here. I actually do, I actually did buy in. Uh, now that I remember, I did just get paid by a client and that money is now in cryptocurrency and I literally just went through with that today. So I actually did put in a decent amount at $77, right? at around here. So it is back up to 78, but 77 is definitely a very good price. And the fact that we pulled all the way down to 75 is an even better price because on the four hour, we're testing our high low MMA, which is beautiful. So anywhere in between, I'd say 78 and 75 is where I would be putting in money to buy. And you can see we did just test our uh, overbought line on our four hour, which is nice to see. We pulled back on our daily, which is beautiful. We took a very steep decline. We can definitely head lower to 50. We could head all the way down to being oversold, which is a huge buy zone, which would definitely send us down to 67. So I said I put in around 30% right at around here. And then if we pull down lower, which would be at around our 67 to, you know, basically this uptrend, this uh, yellow uptrend would be where I'd put in more of my bulk because this channel is still an option. You know, we do have this ascending wedge, which is still an option, but we could pull lower. Uh, we could either, you know, trade up on top here and, and rise out of it, which would be beautiful, or we stay you know, lower and then we can climb back out of it. Either way, we're going up. So I'm just trying to, you know, 
dollar cost my average uh, my average price for crypto and Litecoin as we head down. So this does look like a very good price. The dip was anticipated. Uh, you know, this is definitely good. You know, part to buy in at around 78 down to 72, 73. That's what I would buy in personally. And then if we dip lower, that would be even better. And then I'd put more in. So I'm not putting all my money in at once. That's crazy. You put pieces, increments, a little more. As the price gets lower, you put more and more in. Moving on to Bitcoin. This was the biggest indicator, guys. Like, I don't know how obvious this was. Like, I mean, obviously, if you guys support me on Patreon, you would see all these lines. It would help you guys out. You'd see this prior to most people on YouTube because this video comes after. But, you know... Definitely make sure to check out my Patreon where you guys can get exclusive access and exclusive videos, exclusive content to what I post on Patreon, on Patreon, what I post on YouTube. These charts and everything is specifically inclusive and exclusive to the people solely on Patreon. So thank you guys all for supporting me. Definitely check it out if you'd like to support me. It's literally five bucks. It's that easy. That's the starting. You can read the different tiers, but five bucks, it's that easy. Um, otherwise, guys... Uh, I don't know how obvious this could have been, like, at least in my standpoint. We were testing our freaking weekly over, you know, our weekly high low MMA. It, it's so stupid to, to buy right here because this is a major resistance and we just exploded up in price. Why the hell would we break through here? That's crazy talk. So the pullback is happening. Obviously, a good point in Bitcoin would be I would start to buy in at this line right here. I would put into like uh, Bitcoin at around $4,900 to me. That's what I would start to dollar cost average. And I would start to accumulate or put in more percentage wise as we headed down to here. So as we incrementally fall down to our uptrend, that's when I'd buy in. That's just my opinion. This way, at least you're making profits all the way around. Ethereum. Ethereum looks good. The, the pull was inevitable. I've said this once again. Uh, this was definitely a good buying opportunity. 160 uh, or near 160, not 164. I'd say closer down to 159, 158. Those are good prices, 160 or lower. Uh, to, to start to buy in, uh, I'd say 10, no, I'd say 15 to 20% in my books. That's when I would buy in. Because on its daily, we were overbought. We're currently not. We're trading it around 58, so that looks good. But we're going to head down a little bit lower, I think. Uh, we are at least back down to 158 before we head up higher. Either we're going to come down to our high level MMA or this purple uptrend, and then we can continue off. But the pullback was, it's obvious. Like, I've been saying it. It's its obvious. It makes sense. Lastly, EOS, which probably pulled back too. Yeah, you can see that did. So I did draw a channel out here. Again, you guys on my Patreon have access to this. If you have my live updating charts, you have access. All of you, anyone who signs up to Patreon has live updating. If you do other tiers, you can choose specifically which chart, which uh, coin you want me to chart. Uh, but you can see the pullback was obvious. You know, we're gonna trade out. That's what EOS looks like it wants to do and is most likely going to do. Moving like this, that's what is most likely going to happen with EOS. If we do decide to break lower, it would literally just go like that and then trade up. But it's it, it looks very obvious to me what was going to happen. It hit oh, the overbought line and it pulled back down. It hit this resistance, it pulled back down. Still needs to catch up to its uptrend. Otherwise, guys, that's going to sum up today's episode. It's about 13 minutes long, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a thumbs up if you like the content, give away a 10K, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Peace. <laughs>